Radio Rahim with Ramla Ali. Madison Square Garden, maybe the toughest night out in the squared circle. What do you think? The toughest, yes, because of everything that I had to achieve to get here. Um, not a lot of people know that, but I've been sick for the last four weeks. I was on antibiotics. Mm. Um, it was in my chest, in my throat, in my ears, in my nose. Um, I wasn't feeling very good this week. Um, but, you know, and that's what that like long embrace was between me and Manny, because he was just saying how proud he is of me pushing through all of that today. Um, so, you know, it was my best camp and then my worst <laughs> camp at the same time. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's just mental. And I was able to push through, like, illness today. And You're still feeling it. 100%. Can you not hear it in my voice? My voice I couldn't is, tell if they were just screaming from uh, victory. Yeah, like, just my, my voice is a lot deeper than what it is. I mean, I don't sound like this usually, guys. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like I just I haven't been feeling well. But you know, to pull a victory like that when you're not feeling a hundred percent, like I knew I could win today on fifty percent, and that's not and that's and you know that's no like disrespect to my opponent, but like I believe in myself. I believe what I bring to the table, and I know even at fifty percent I can perform well, and I proved that tonight. Were you encouraged or even considering canceling the Hell fight? Hell no. <laughs> You know, when you've put so much into a camp. I've, you know, been in L.A. since October. You know, the grueling tengues, the mountain runs in like 8,000 feet altitude. And, you know, the, 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 the tough sparring, doing 10, 12 rounds with two, three different opponent fresh legs coming in. Like, you don't just throw that away just because, you know, you got, you're ill. You, you, if you can push through that in camp, you can push through that on fight night. And that's what I had to do. I had to dig deep mentally to push through and tell myself, do you know what? It's all in your head, girl. Push through. And that's what I had to do today. And every round, there was uh, pressure on you. This girl did not lay down. She came to win. She came to yeah. fight. Uh, in an experience like this, mm -hmm. what did you learn? And what can you take from this fight into the next? I think you've got to be calculated, um, and that's what I learned today. And I proved I was a lot more calculated than my opponent. Um, yes, she was fit, but then, you know, as Manny was saying in the corner, she's getting careless. And I had to capitalize on that. I had to capitalize on her carelessness. And it proved um, on the judges' scorecard. <laughs> You talked about what it takes to fight through a moment like this and being willing to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. There's so many women around the world, boxing fans at large, but also mm -hmm. women and Muslims around the world that mm -hmm. look for your fight and are encouraged mm -hmm. every time you step through the ropes. Mm -hmm. So how does that feel walking out of the ring with a nice new strap around your waist? feels amazing. It just goes to show that I, I want to like inspire the next generation of girls and you know the two little girls that walked me out, CNN and Gigi. I hope they got inspired today watching me and yeah it's just you know performing and getting these straps shows people that you know you can do anything if you put your mind to it and that's what I you know hopefully did today. You know it's early days in a long career but for women's boxing in particular mm -hmm. there's a short road really to mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in 2023 and uh, what are your immediate goals uh, for your next opponent? I obviously, you know, see myself getting a world title very soon. I'd love to. Um, I'd, yeah, I'd love to get that world title soon. Um, you know, for me, I just trust in my um, team. If they think I'm ready next, <laughs> let's go. If they think I need one more, and then after that, let's go. Like, you know, you need to be able to work with the team that you trust fully 100%. And I trust fully 100% my team. Well, last time we spoke to you in Saudi, I'll be back in Saudi in uh, almost a month's time. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe put some ice uh, on the eye and we'll catch you there. Just I keep know, going. It's so annoying. It was like a clash of heads. Mm. And as soon as it happened, I felt it. And I was like, damn, I'd have, you know, I'd have I preferred it if it was a punch. It was like, mm. you know what? Good shot. Like when it's a clash of heads, it just shows that you're a bit careless as well. Mm. So that's 
this clash of heads that happened in like the early rounds you know reminded me not to be careless and be calculated so you know in essence it was a good thing and that's what I had to do through, throughout the rest of the rounds, you know, be a bit more calculated. Did it give you a sense of urgency? Because even a clash of heads, if it stops on the cards, uh, could disadvantage you. No, I didn't 100%. Like, I, I knew it happened and I could see it swelling up. But mm. again, mental, push through it. It's just a clash of heads, you know. We've gone through a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We saw that uh, big right hand land a couple times tonight. Would you consider that your signature punch? We're getting there. <laughs> um, I hope so. Uh, you know, it was like, you know, I'm sure she did the same, you know, um, studied me. And we studied her and we knew she was a sucker for the right hand and the left mm. hook. So that's what I tried to throw the most. Right hand Ramla? <laughs> That's a good one. That's there we go. Yeah. This is how this happens. Yeah, now it'll yeah. be on the splash yeah, yeah. all over the front pages. Radio Rahim with right hand Ramallah Ali. We'll see you next time. Congratulations on a great performance. Thank you very much.